What is going on guys, Pound the Shop, and tonight we're talking Vortec heads. We're going to be answering two major questions here. Number one, how much lift can a Vortec head, stock Vortec head truly take uh, with uh, stock retainers, stock valve springs, stock keepers? And the second question is going to be, what about a drop-in uh, spring replacement using the stock retainer, stock keepers possibly, without any machining? How much lift can we get out of these heads when we're talking real budget, flat tap of cams? Let's check it. This is mostly going to be applied to guys running under 500 lift with a flat tapping cam. But we got a lot of misinformation or different kind of information online about how much lift we can actually run on a Vortec head. And I'm getting countless messages. I'm getting uh, lots of guys, you know, having the, the, the worst case scenario and, you know, getting mix, um, uh, misinformation and actually bending push rods, blown up engines because they're not really check, doing the proper checks. So bear with me in this video uh, please before you ask a whole bunch of questions just watch the video because if, if you're trying to figure out how much lift to run in your head the answer should be in this video I get a lot of times where guys are asking questions before they even watch the video so just take a few minutes and and just watch through the video and then if you still have some questions feel free to comment below but let's take a look uh, at this vortex head of what we got going on here I'm gonna go over some terminology and things you need to understand so you guys can set up your heads at home and do your own checks without any special tools or anything like that for the most part um, but uh, just for the record, this is just a guide. This is not set in stone, uh, but this should get you close. So don't, it's not my problem. I'm not responsible for what you guys do on your engines. I'm just trying to provide you with some information so you know uh, what's going on here and what the issue lies with Vortec heads. So let's check it out. All right, first we're gonna talk about the stock Vortec valve springs. So they're just a single coil spring, no dampener, uh, and they're installed at 1.7 inches. So I want you to understand what that means. That is when the, when the valve is closed in this up position, that's the distance between the top of the valve spring and the bottom of the valve spring when it's installed. So obviously it's bigger than 1.7 inches right now, but when it's installed, the distance from the, where it sits on the head to the bottom of the retainer is supposed to be 1.7 inches. That's your installed height. You need to understand that, and you have to understand that each spring comes with a with a, um, a spec sheet that gives you that that measurement on a stock Vortec head like I said it's 1.7 inches so the stock valve springs right, right here we're looking at um, they're they're not really uh, designed obviously for a performance valve spring uh, they have rated from new they're about 80 pounds on the seat so when when the, the valves close there's 80 psi of pressure on this valve spring, so it's a fairly weak valve spring even for uh, a factory roller cam, but obviously these engines weren't designed to rev out very far. Uh, they they work okay for a mild flat tap at cam. Uh, I've done it before, I've done it with mild roller cams, but you have to understand this the, the spring is limited. A lot of guys uh, worry about the the uh, retainer to seal clearance, but this this factory valve spring is actually only good uh, for about 465 lift max. Anything more than that, you're kind of pushing the limits of this valve spring. And you have to remember, it's own, it's a very weak spring. So if you're running a, a cam with more than a, a little bit more than stock duration, uh, it's not going to be a very happy. Uh, very happy valve spring, you're gonna run into valve float issues. So that's number one issue. If you plan on running more than 465 thou, you can just get rid of those valve strings right off the top. Two springs uh, I get asked about a lot is uh, the CompCams 980-16 uh, and uh, the CompCams 981-16, which actually is uh, a drop-in replacement for a lot of GM heads, including the Vortex. Um, it's very common, the 981 is a very common spring. You'll find out with like the XC grinds. It'll be the, the recommended spring uh, for most of the flat tappet cams uh, under 500 lift. Remove the inner dampener, so this inner part. Remove that, you're not gonna use that. Some guys might, and I've seen issues where a piece of this will break up or get caught and then get jammed up in the seal. So it's better just to remove it uh, for a mild fly, flat tap of cam, you're not going to really it's not, you're not going to really see a difference in like spring surge or anything like that. It's it's better to play it safe and just get rid of that and just run the spring. So that's with the the 980 or 981 comp cam springs or equivalent, and then it'll slide on 
there. You don't have to worry about interference issues. Um, and the retainers actually uh, work really, really good with these springs as well. So I mentioned the, the uh, comp cams 981, 980 valve springs. Um, the reason being, there has to be certain dimensions you have to meet for the valve spring to work. You can't obviously just throw any valve spring in. So those valve springs have an installed height of 1.7 inches, which match our uh, stock retainers and keepers on a Vortec head. Uh, the ID of the valve spring is right. You can't have a smaller ID of uh, 0.87 inches and you can't have an ID bigger than uh, 1.265 ideally or you start to kind of get too big for the retainer. So I can throw up a few part numbers. I'll go through the catalog and throw up a few part numbers from a few different companies that will work. But what you're going to find, I guess my whole point is, is what you're going to find here is they're all going to be around 500 lifts max and then that's just dimensionally what it works out to. I think there's a few circle uh, track trick valve springs that fit on the, on these heads but they're super expensive I, i'll do some research on that but that's why i kind of aimed it towards um the flat tappet guys because the springs that are designed to fit on these heads that are not beehive drop in are going to be flat tappet springs designed for or, or uh, sorry flat tappet or mild hydraulic that are designed uh um with spring pressures in that 1.7 installed height so the big issue everyone talks about with Vortex is the retainer to seal clearance, okay? So what that means is the bottom of the retainer here will actually come in contact with the seal when you go past a certain lift. I'll lift up, show you what it means. So you can see where it's, it's hitting the seal. That's not what you want. You actually want a minimum clearance there. So at full lift, ideally you want to have 40 to 50 thou clearance in there. Um, that's that's the range if I like to go by GM actually themselves say 40 thou 50 thou is a safer number so let's say we're gonna say 40 to 50 thou clearance in there uh, at max lift so what we hear is a lot of different numbers on how much lift a Vortec head can take we know now the stock springs uh, we're good for about 465, uh, but we hear a lot of numbers uh, about 420 lift, 430 lift is the max uh, lift you can run on a Vortec head, and uh, there is some truth to that. Okay, and I've actually I've said that before to people because the reason I say that is because I want people to do the checks, and what what the issue is is. When GM puts these heads together, they oftentimes don't bottom the seals out. So the seal, these have all pushed down. This is an aftermarket seal. I'll talk about that in a second. But these stock seals are actually not pushed down all the way. So when that reduces the distance, obviously, if if the seal's sitting up, put this, pop this back in here. I'll show you what I mean. So if the if the the higher the seal is sitting obviously the closer it is to the bottom of the retainer. So that I, that's not what we want because realistically, um, I did some measurements here on a bunch of stock Vortec heads. When on average I found with the valve seals not seated, you had 460-ish, around 460 thousandths from here to here. So now you take off your uh, 50, 40 to 50 thousandths and that's where that 420 number comes from. So 460 say minus 40 thou for that little bit of clearance you want at full lift, now that's where that 420 number comes from. So what happens if you fully seat the, the valve seal? Okay, now that we uh, we made sure that our seals are bottomed out all the way, uh, I'm referring to a factory seal here. This is aftermarket, like I said, and we'll talk about that in one second. But we made sure our seals are bottomed out all the way. Now the distance from here to here, if you were to take your vernier calipers and measure that distance, you'd be looking at about 510 on average. So this distance went from 465 with our seals not seated, so 460, 465 approximately this distance. With our seal seated, we brought that all the way up to 510. So now our head is good, uh, or sorry, we can run enough lift safely with our little buffer clearance of 40 to 50 thou. Now we're in you know, the 460, 465. So we're right in the same area about where our stock valve spring gives up the ghost as far as lift. So that puts us, uh, you know, in that 460, 470, uh, 460, 470 range. Um, but now we still want to get this up to uh, close to 500, the 490 to 500 so range. You're probably having to change your valve seals anyway, 
install a set of these Falpro valve seals. Part number is 72861. I'll put that up and I'll put that in the description if I remember. Uh, I find if you with these valve seals, you end up with another 10 or 12 thou. So with the with the uh, Felpro valve seals seated all the way. Now we're looking about safe to about 480 thou. Our next option is to run an offset keeper. So uh, I don't know if you can pick it up in the camera, but if you look at this part right here, where the it actually locks onto the the valve stem, the little raised rib there. If you compare it to this one, this one's in the middle where this one's moved down. This is what you call an offset keeper. These are 30 thou offset keepers and what we can do is use these to actually bring the retainer up, okay? So what that does is it brings this retainer up so it sits higher on the valve stem. There's two things we gotta know about that. First off, now our distance from the head to here, which is our installed height, which we talked about earlier, is now 1.730 approximately. Uh, so what we have to do, if we wanna maintain that height, because we need to maintain that or our springs are gonna be weak, we have to put a valve shim measure this distance. With the shim in there and our offset keepers, it should bring us to about 1.7 inches. Again, this has to be checked on each valve, each set, and make sure because you want to make sure you're within that installed height. Here's the biggest uh, downside to uh, uh, offset keepers is you start to lose the valve stem. It's not going to matter on the exhaust, you can see, because we need, to, we need a valve stem if we're running self-aligning rocker arms because the, the rocker arm actually centers itself on the tip of the valve. It cannot make contact with the keepers or the retainer. It has to only ride on the tip of the valve. This is not so much an issue on the exhaust valve, but let me show you on the intake valve here. With the intake valve, you actually lose even more. The, the Well, you don't lose more, but the tip's not as big as the exhaust valve. You can see here, and when you're running certain uh, self-aligned rocking arms, it gets a little close. You, like I said, you don't want to be pushing on the keepers or the retainer. You want to be making contact with just the, the valve tip. So this is one thing to consider when you're that close, uh, maybe offset keepers aren't the best bet for this. I have done it. I have run uh, not factory rocker arms, but aftermarket rocker arms on uh, valve tips like this and ha have had no issue. Uh, but let me show you one more thing you can do uh, if you're just trying to get these uh, 980 or 981 springs to work on a Vortec head. So I'm going to tell you this trick off the record. Uh, I don't want to be responsible for anyone doing anything crazy, but let me tell you this does work, but off the record, I'm not saying anything. You can remove 30 thou off the bottom of your retainers with no issue. As you can see, this freshly ground one here uh, versus the stock one, this has had about 32 thou of material removed and that gives us our, our clearance that we need with running stock keepers. So with that distance now, so now we got our, our aftermarket seal seated all the way, our stock keepers and our modified uh, retainer, this distance right here now, our seal to retainer clearance is about 550, 560. So that means we're safe for 500 lifts all day long, no issues, and uh, without having to actually buy anything except springs. This is totally, again, off the record. I'll quickly show you how I do these uh, just at home uh, on my uh, my uh, Black & Decker valve grinding machine that I actually just use for doing back cuts and stuff now. I'll show you how I do this quick. But again, this is off the record. You can do it however you want. I am not responsible for anything you guys do. So in summary, we know that the specs we see online, 420 lift is actually realistic without those seals seated off the truck. 420 lift, 430 lift, that's about as much as you want to run. You're going to have issues. You're going to start slamming into that seal. The second thing is with the seal bottomed out, the stock valve spring becomes the next limiting factor, even though just about any cam you want to run, you want to get rid of that valve spring. Uh, and you know, lastly, we can get up to 500 lift without any machining here uh, to the actual head. Little bit of retainer modification, offset keepers, however you decide to do that. But this is a drop-in valve spring upgrade. You're looking at about 85 bucks for a set of springs. 
and you could run pretty much most flat tappet grinds, street grinds, and uh, hydro, flat tappet hydraulic grinds, and even mild roller grinds uh, without any, without having to go to a beehive spring. So that, again, that brings up another point. Past 500 lift, there's not a lot of options for valve springs other than going to a beehive. So that's your next option if you're running uh, more aggressive roller cams or higher lift. But this is an option for you budget builders running flat type of cams, five, up to 500 lift, no issues. So if you have any questions, please comment below and uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Thanks guys.